my name is rupali and topic of my today's presentation is in situ resource utilization technology for sustainable de development as we as we all know mars is quite similar to earth but it is freezing barren land which primarily has 95.32 volume percentage of carbon dioxide 0.13 volume percentage of oxygen volcanoes and wind blow with full breath here to colonize advanced technology is required to protect humans from the harsh martian environment this could be one of the most expensive space mission because of several primary and secondary reason also for mission dependence on the earth's resources can lead to degradation that's why there is the need of the technology that can reduce the mission cost and also be a sustainable option in this presentation we will cover following topic before starting it is important to know what is in situ resource utilization and why do we need it in situ resource utilization involves any hardware or operation that harness and utilizes local or in situ resources to create products and services for robotic and human exploration and sustained presence in situ resource utilization technology can help to reduce dependence on the indigenous resources but right now it is at developing stage the purpose to explore isru technology is reduce the dependence on indigenous resources reduce launch mass and number of launches to and to and to reduce the gear ratio it also aim to reduce the cost and and also it is a sustainable option though there are lot of in situ resource resources but here we focus on the four main types of resources those are carbon di carbon dioxide oxygen water and methane the development of isru technology is categorized under five categories stage 1 is the finding location or you can say potential areas preparation stage 2 is the preparation stage stage 3 is the setup stage stage 4 is acquisition of the resources and stage 5 stage 5 is the production the first stage involves exploration of site where we can find the potential resources some sites which has lots of potential on mars for example polar region on the mars scientists believe that this region is ice region and also it is good place to understand martian climate thirdly it give maximum sunlight second stage is near the volcano archea mon near this many times cloud huge cloud is observed which may be melted water and some scientists believe that once there was a glacier there is no doubt region with the water resources has high possibility of habitat the third is grand canyon a number of theories are given by scientists and the most famous is that stretches for, uh, stretches are formed because of erosion due to the water flow and the possibility is maybe beneath the surface water is still present this stage is not only help us to find mineral of our interest but also tell us about the surface topography terrain features site imaging and mapping condition about poles and polar shaded region it will also help in analyzing the data of the minerals all this will be done first by orbiter resource evaluation in orbiter resource evaluation we use high resolution cameras and different spectroscopy processes this will provide detailed knowledge about surface topography and terrain features by using neutron spectrometer with the lower altitudes 
give us clear maps of possible water location on Mars. High resolution imaging will help in direct landing in polar shaded regions. Second is surface resource evaluation. It is done by using stereo terrain imaging, mass spectroscopy, Raman laser, measurable effect and alpha particle detector. Surface resource evaluation give depth anal analysis about the minerals and help, help to decide mining techniques we can use. Here are the picture of the NASA Resolve NASA Resolve tool and ESA prospect, uh, prospect. That helped uh, ESA prospect instrument that helped to understand the depth profile of the water volatiles. Mapping and scaling, which will be useful for easy navigation and transportation of resources. The second stage is preparation stage. It in includes leveling of plant, construction of launch and landing pad, and roads. For the safe landing of rovers, crew members, and for safe transportation of the resources, it is necessary to construct landing pads and roads. For this, there is need of the rovers which can work despite of dust storm in harsh climatic condition and, and can work autonomously. We can construct roads on Mars by leveling the surface and then by centering the regolith, lava tubes and rocks. We can also build centered tile from the regolith for landing pads. Here is the picture of the KSC SWAM workers. They develop a low mass, high strength lunar, lunar uh, bulldozer. We can also use it for the mass. Bulldo uh, along with the quick attach mechanism so that NASA GSC carried rover, rover could autonomously and quickly pick up and preload the attachment of the blade, then immediately work with it. This blade has been in uh, this um, has been used in desert rats field test. The second image is also of the KSC swam works. Here, the, here they developed robotic technology for centering lunar regolith and the mounted it on the rover for field testing. The third stage is, includes the setup. The third stage, we will set up different units like energy units, mining unit, storage unit, and manufacturing units. We can produce power from three processes on the Mars by using solar, wind, and nuclear energy. Next, we have the mining units where we can extract ores and convert them into the raw material for further production in this different processes are involved depending on the types of resources. And then we have the storage and the production unit. So here is the mining cycle. We can uh, done mining by first doing excavation and drilling for acquisition. Adsorption membrane cryogenic distillation and mineral benefication for isolation, crushing, grinding, and sorting for preparation. After this, resource will be transferred to the manufacturing units. On Mars, resource processing also includes water extraction and processing uh, and processing from in situ resource resources as well as from Mars atmosphere. We can, uh, we can use carbon dioxide to form oxygen and hydrocarbon fuels such as methane. Since Mars has three different water sources, granular, granular soil, hydrated minerals at the surface and sheet of ice under the surface, each Mars water source involves different water extraction mining techniques. Here is the picture of ExoMars rover by ESA, which can drill about two meter surface for assessment of the sample of water. 
and uh, on the right hand side the, uh, there is the picture of the moxi on the perseverance which can able to produce 5 gram of oxygen directly from the carbon dioxide the fourth stage is the uh, the four stages of acquisition of resources from the regolith and from the atmosphere which include multiple steps so the first step is to collect and separate carbon dioxide for this uh, the first is mass dust uh, filtration filter electrostatic uh, cyclone it is an electrostatic precipitator which will filter out dust and enable the Martian air to be used for in situ resource utilization. The second one is Mars atmosphere, atmosphere adsorption pump. A flight prototype zeolite adsorption compressor is being developed as a reliable, efficient cost, effective means of extracting and compressing atmospheric carbon. Uh, carbon dioxide on the surface of Mars. And next we have mass atmosphere solidification. The mass atmospheric carbon uh, dioxide freezer is a low cost and low power refrigerator device that we will condense carbon dioxide directly from the Martian atmosphere. This device can be used to provide carbon dioxide feed required to many ISPP process. Mars Atmosphere Compressor MOXI, uh, has high tolerance for the dust, robustness to harsh environment and includes the integrated filter on the suction to remove dust and particulate before entering the compressor. Here is the steps to, uh, by which we can process carbon dioxide. The first is solid oxide carbon dioxide electrolysis. Second is low pressure carbon dioxide, glow plasma dissociation. Third is reverse photo gas shift. And um, fourth is the Sabatia reactor. And then we have the water processing. We can process water by water e electrolysis or decomposition. And we can separate water uh, by membrane and cooling. The resource processing for production of mission consumable involves extraction and processing of the resources from the prepared and delivered resources into product that can be used for the critical mission consumables such as rocket propellant, fuel, cell reactant, life support commodities such as water, oxygen and nitrogen. So here is the stage fifth in which we obtain oxygen and methane. The first uh, is to produce oxygen only by the zirconia solid oxide carbon dioxide electrolysis in which carbon dioxide is decomposed at 900 to 1000 degrees Celsius into carbon monoxide plus oxide in the presence of the platinum catalyst and it produces oxygen directly. The second reaction is of the reverse water gas shift in which carbon dioxide is reacted with the hydrogen at 400 to 650 degrees Celsius and it produces carbon monoxide. The water produced here, uh, we uh, do water electrolysis and thus uh, oxygen is produced. And then we have the Bose reaction in which carbon, di uh, carbon dioxide is reacted with the hydrogen at uh, 450 to 600 degrees Celsius and produce carbon and hydrogen uh, and water. And here again in the presence of nickel, iron and cobalt catalyst. And here we again do water electro electrolysis to produce oxygen. Then we have the oxygen, uh, then we have the processes to obtain oxygen and methane production. Methane, the Sabatier electrolytic reaction in which carbon dioxide is reacted with the hydrogen at 200 to 300 degrees Celsius, in which methane and uh, water is produced. 
So here, uh, water is again undergoes water electrolysis to produce oxygen. Then we uh, then the reaction uh, next reaction is of the methane reformer in which carbon monoxide is reacted with the hydrogen at two fifty degrees Celsius, and methane and water is produced. And again, the water is go uh, undergo uh, for the water electrolysis, and then we have the co-production of the electrolysis, in which we use the anode and cathode uh, to produce methane and oxygen. And next, uh, the is the conclusion ISRU, ISRU is at the developing stage right now. Scientists and researchers are trying their best to explore more and more this technology. ISRU technology has loads of potential. It can reduce the mission cost as well as it can reduce the dependence on the earth resources. So it can, it, um, it, is uh, it is the gateway uh, gateway for many more new technologies and here are the references i use at the end i would like to thank audience for their undivided attention mass society for giving such a honorable platform to share our knowledge and my co-author abhay kaushik and dr sudhir kumar chaturvedi for his mentorship thank you and have a nice day Thank you so much. Um, that was a wonderful presentation. Um, do you have a moment for um, any question and answer, um, if there are any? Yes, if you oh. have any. Uh, okay, have uh, let me just them. check here and see. Um, if anyone has any questions, um, could you please post them in the chat? I'm not seeing any questions um, right now. Um, we thank you very, very much uh, for your time um, in regards to this um, utilization technology. Um, it was a great presentation. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I still don't have any questions. So we'll go ahead and close out this conference window. Um, thank you again so much and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.